Here is a creature fair as light, like Caesar's wife above suspicion. Easy, swinging chick, eyes don't... Hello, girls. Eisdell is with you again. <laughs> and the weather's getting warmer. <laughs> steady, steady, girls. <laughs> girls, are you frustrated? <laughs> then get yourself an Eisdell today. <laughs> Remember, Eisdell does not contain phonacetin. Just rheumatism, arthritis, and old bones. <laughs> and now, folks, here is a record of me saying, Hello, folks. Hello, folks. <laughs> oh, that was Mr. Spike Milligan saying, Hello, folks. Yeah, that was John McLeod saying that that was Spike Milligan saying, Hello, folks. <laughs> and that was John Hewitt saying that that was John McLeod saying that that was Spike Milligan saying, Hello, folks. I suppose the ABC do know what they're doing. We do it for the money. Yes, but money can't buy friends. No, but you get a better class of enemy. <laughs> and now, folks, tonight's a drama. Is there a Michael Eisdahl in the house? Stop. Right, read the writing written on this written rotten rope. The scene is the House of Lords in England. The year 1958. A very important year for England. They'd have looked silly without it, folks. <laughs> uh, that was the voice of Lord Robert Thud. Oh. Sir Thud was a very sick man. Yes, I was a sickening Thud. <laughs> it was the 3rd of August and I had just addressed the House of Lords. <coughs> my lord. My lord, my lord. I have news that is six feet deep. <laughs> that sounds like grave news. Yes. <laughs> At 4.30 this afternoon as the crow flies on Lord's Cricket, on Lord's Cricket Ground, Australia won the Ashes. Oh, no, no, no. And, 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 and worse still, there were women and children present. <laughs> oh, good heavens. No, no. Oh, the poor Duke. <laughs> well, there are plenty more. Please, Queen Victoria has declared it a serious day of mourning. The prime monster of the antipodes has sent this message of Australian condolence to us. <laughs> Dear Lord Thad, <laughs> we all join in with you. <laughs> in your great loss of the ashes. <laughs> Somehow I did detected a note of insincerity. <laughs> Look, are we the people of old England going to take this lying down? Only during the hours of darkness. It's better be good. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I want... I, I, I want oh, it. you'll never last the honeymoon, I tell you that. <laughs> I, I, I was going, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, he's dead. Strange. Oh. He's never done that before. <laughs> That night on Tower Hill, the English took their revenge. <laughs> yes, an effigy of Sir Don Bradman was stuffed with centipods and burnt. <laughs> but Australia hit back. Oh, that night at the Royal Covent Garden Opera House to show her disdain, Gladys Moncrief sang like this. <laughs> Meantime, Scotland Yard of England and England Yard of Wales and Welsh Yard of China were trying to find a reason for England's losing the test. Hi, my name is Inspector Tom McJimstein and Sons Limited. <laughs> now, on the day England lost the ashes, a man from the Ministry of Cricket was sent to my house. Inspector Tom Jim. Oh, 
I, I was out. <laughs> I had just discovered the dangers of oversleeping in someone else's flat. <laughs> when the phone rang. Yes, indeed. I heard the phone ring. Oh, yes, most certainly. The phone did ring, aye. <laughs> aye. Aye, there was no doubt about it that the phone did ring, you know. I'm positive. I, 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 of course it rang. I went ting a ling a ling, it went. I placed the door to my ear and I made a metal note to fire the sound effects engineer. Hello? <laughs> Speaking personally. I'll be right over to find out what you mean. Passing only to turn the page of the script, I arrived as John McLeod in his tatty radio voice who said, Mick Tomstein, or something to that effect, I want you to meet Chambers. Chambers? There's a handle to his name. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. Lord Chambers. Lord Chambers. The world's greatest forensic scientist. A brain so refined, it shines like a bright star in the firmament. Oh, there must be some mistake, mate. Good grief. Who are you? I'm Herbert I. Spock. And what's the eye for? Oh, no, that's private, sir. You're a private eye? Yes, sir. Good. <laughs> what's your last job? This is, by the sound of it. Uh, up to date, I've been a, a municipal rat catcher. I caught, uh, ooh, I caught 600 in me traps in me time. Oh, and where do you operate? Oh, too late to operate, mate. They're dead when I find it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I see you specialize in forced laughter. I, uh, I want you to assist Inspector McTom de Stamstamon in his investigations. Look, look, sir, I've worked for the council for yes. 38 years. Well, 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 well. Well, about salary. What? Could I have one? <laughs> well, shall we say a pound a year? Pound a year? Agreed. Now, off you go. Wait a minute. And tell Paddy to get to the Inspector McTom Jimstein and Sons Limited, also Proprietary Limited Australia, and Spock, commenced by searching the recently vacated London state rooms the Australians had occupied at the YWCA. <laughs> look! Look! What's that under his bed? Oh, it's a cricket ball, sir. <laughs> A, a strange device. Yes. So, this is what a cricket ball looks like. Yes. Well, the secret is out. Yes. Here, this cricket ball sounds hollow. Yes, it does. Do you know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to have a wee look inside. Come Anybody in? Yes, you are, mate. Here, watch them holes in the floor. Ah, they're not holes. Aren't they? I thought they were. <laughs> they are holes, but they're not holes. Hey, are you mad? That's what they're saying. Oh, but suddenly, there in the middle of the cricket ball, the inspector saw a boomerang. There, you hear that? There in the middle of the cricket ball, I suddenly seen a boomerang. <laughs> suddenly, the inspector realised what it meant. You hear that? Suddenly I've realised what it meant. It's a good job I came along in it. Yes. The boomerang. That boomerang was the reason for the balls always returning to the bowler's hand. Oh. What would you say, madam? I say that that's the reason for the ball returning to the bowler's hand. <laughs> Inspector, we've got to report this cricket ball to the MCC and tell the Duke of Norfolk. It's six and six and six. Meantime, Australia was taking precautions on the cricket situation. We have met here to decide where to hide the ashes for safety. I intend to send the ashes to this part of the Woomera Rocket Range. Oh, I'll say that bit again. The Woomera Rocket Range. That's a danger area. It was for you. <laughs> it is a dangerous area. Yes. Therefore, I'm asking for one brave volunteer. Very well. Very well, gentlemen. One brave singer. <laughs> All right. One cowardly volunteer. Well, that just leaves me. <laughs> Heaven 
haven't I seen you somewhere before? Oh, I'm out of there now. <laughs> What's your name, then? I'm Colonel James Riddle, damn you. B.C. D.S.O. M.C.K. Okay, there's no need to spell it. <laughs> Are you mad? That's what they say. Now, just sign your name on this form saying you're volunteering for certain death. Right. Wait a minute, I can't write. Well, just put an X there. How do you make an X? You, uh, you get two straight lines and you yep. rub them together. Meantime in England, the Australian Secret Service had pulled off something important. <laughs> this is the General Overseas Service of the BBC. Last night, two masked Australians broke into Scotland Yard during a policeman's tea party. From under the very nose of the inspector, they stole a cricket ball. The people are therefore warned not to keep cricket balls under their noses. The Australians escaped in a high-powered kangaroo. It is reported that as a reprisal, the British Navy will send the submarine surplus to try and bring the ashes back to England. Uh, switch it off. Captain Snapson, watch our position. Well, we're 30 feet down and crossing the great Australian bark, which is much worse than its bite. I see. <laughs> Right, up, Periscope! <laughs> Remember to not stand there again. Come and have a look at this, number one. All right, sir. Hmm. That dash is strange. What did you say? It's uh, A, B, C, and Echo, six and seven eighths. The idiot hung his hat over the Periscope again. <laughs> He's ready. <laughs> Thank you, Cecil. Thank you. One lump or two, sir? I think just one lump for me. <laughs> ah. <clears throat> now, Cecil, open sealed orders. They appear to be very, very secret. Al, listen. Suspect man believed to be burying the ashes in Warmer Desert. Good heavens. Landing party to stop him at all costs. Right. Australian warship passing astern! Periscope up! <laughs> <laughs> Carruthers? Yes, sir. What's the name on her side? Oh, I'll spell it for you, sir. Oh. Yes. Uh, that's double L, sir. I see. Again. Yes. Another L. Let's see. Oh, dear. You idiot, those are portholes! Oh. <laughs> Volunteer Eccles and Greek Tom are preparing for their mission. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Eccles! Yep. Haggis! Yep. Are you ready? Yep. Hey, hey, what are you bringing at the flower pot for? Why? I, I got hurt in it. I'm a landowner now. <laughs> All the land in that pot is mine. I dug it out of French's forest. It's valuable land, mine. All right. That's a good boy. But tell me something. What, what are you going to grow, huh? Grow? This is valuable building land. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, what are you going to build? Flowers. <laughs> Yeah, hands up! Holy smokes! A bush ranger! In 1962? Hey, you Greek Tom, hand over that biscuit tin. Over a mile, you dead the body. <laughs> Step over his dead body with the tin. There you are. No hard feelings, Ned. Right. <laughs> now, take this pistol. Right, take it. Point it at your head. Right. Now, if you make one false move after I've gone, right. pull the trigger. Okay, you got the drop in me. What Eccles and his partner don't know is that they are just decoys. See? We don't know that. We don't know that we're decoys. <laughs> See? That's what the the location of the real ashes, however, is revealed in the horse of representatives at two to one. I have been asked to tell you the real location of the ashes. <laughs> they have been secreted in the linings of a certain Madam X's corsets in Palmer Street. <laughs> the lady was very short-sighted. In fact, so short-sighted, she got into a grandfather clock to make a phone call. And she must be a very determined woman. Oh, why? She got through. Hey. <laughs> it must have been Andrea. <laughs> So the fate of the ashes hung by a suspender belt. No! <laughs> Mr. 
Meantime, the British Marine Command have landed and are rapidly closing in on Eccles and his escort from all directions. Left! Left! Keep it there! Left! Left! Call for you, sir! The leg goes up! Oh, I'm saving it for the hill! I say, you'll have to give them a powder each. Now then, we'll camp here for the night, gentlemen, put tents up for the men, and erect a three-story Georgian manor for me. Nothing pretentious. <laughs> now then, how are the water supplies going? Damn low, sir. There's an uh, uh, about a giant native wants to speak to you. Male or female? I can't tell, hasn't got any clothes on. <laughs> Come forward, Abarajain of no pick sex. You make him speak him. Tell him he make a long fella speak a long story. Good morning. I come from the arid desert. Now, I've been sent here by the chief of the Hanker tribe. I see. He's a Hanker chief. <laughs> what a um, blow for you. <laughs> We've discovered... Wait, what, what? We have discovered two white men dying of thirst in the desert, and one was saying... The ashes. Save the ashes. Well, myself, I would have said water, water. Much the most thirst-quenching Well, it was when I was a boy. Meantime, and I mean that most sincerely, Australian scientists were working on an ashes locating machine. No. That's right, no, steady, 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 no. Gentlemen, 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 hold, that's fine. Gentlemen, I have been sent here by the Hindu Commission to demonstrate to you the possibilities of the ashes being specially magnetized with atomic particles like these. Now, these particles here, I have magnetized and atomized. See, watch, I throw them up in the air, so. You see that, Mr. Jones? Go and scrape those atoms off the ceiling. Right. Smith, go and scrape Mr. Jones off the ceiling. <laughs> now, Mr. Boom, will you switch on the radar screen, please? Channel 7. <laughs> now, observe. Now, observe. No matter where Madam X and her courses are, this radar screen will show her her movements. Oh, that's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> now then, the radar beam is going to go right inside that poor lady's corsets. Now listen. <laughs> oh dear, dear, dear. This is something we never bargained for. This radar says her corsets are in a washing machine in a Chinese laundry. What? Oh, fine. Now, what's the number? Let me see now. Are you 4573? If her mother answers, don't hang up. You're still onto a good thing. No, hurry, hurry. To keep Madame X under observation, we had the outsides of her windows clean so we could see in and left the inside dirty so she couldn't see out. Hey, what are those things outside that I can't see inside outside? <laughs> Doing inside out my window. We have police officers. Oh, hello, boy. Um... <laughs> Excuse me, but at this stage, may I interrupt uh, the program? There's been a maldistribution of lines among the artists appearing. I'll just go through the scoreboard for you. Uh, for instance, Mr. L. Thomas has only had, let me see, 13 lines, the last line of which was, we are police officers. Now, both Messrs. John Hewitt and John McLeod have had in excess of 42 lines each. Look, I say, old boy, this is going to be rather lengthy, so... Um, I have a little background music, please. Thanks very much. That's jolly good. Right. Um, I myself have only had, now let's see, approximately, approximately 23 lines, which is well below my norm of 38. Uh, I'd li like to mention at this stage that high tide at Port Jackson is at 4.32 and, um, <clears throat> and whiting uh, biting at the spit. <laughs> As uh, there are only four pages of dialogue left, we're going to distribute the lines in quantity rather than quality. That is, several of the cast might deliver the same line at the same time. Do you understand what I think that's all? That's about all I need say. Oh, that is finished. And what do you unemployed actors want, then? Just a minute, madam. My name is Inspector Bertram I. Lim. The eye is silent as in looking. My name is Maddie Lynn Bannister. Bannister, but the legs are silent as in trousers. Madam, are you the owner of whalebone corsets number 42, 38, 46, outside X? Yes, they were a present from my husband in memory of 36, 26, 38. Where are the corsets in question, sir? Sir? Madam, to you? Ha, ha, ha. At your age, it doesn't really matter. 
Oh. What's the address of this laundry? The address is Street Street. Street Street? Well, that's only the name. The full title is Street Street Street. But the lover is silent as in wardrobe. <laughs> Sergeant? Yes? Listen to me, lad. I'm listening. Surround the building. Alone? <laughs> Try, dear. <laughs> now, now you all keep me covered with this Tanya Verster while I knock on this door. We are police officers. <laughs> and I must warn you, anything you say will be taken down and used in the Bob Rogers show. <laughs> I am innocent. Let's talk this over sensibly in good old Australian style. All right. Now cop this. Finally, after friendly persuasion, <laughs> some gentle talk, and a four-hour bashing with an iron bar, the Chinaman gave up the garments and the ghost. With trembling hands, with trembling hands, we tore them open. Ooh. Look, the ashes. Yes. Oh, steady now. Right. Hold out your hand. OK, don't worry. I'll pour them out. Oh. Uh, safe at last. Yes. <laughs> ow! Ow! You idiots! Ow! Ow! And that's how Australia lost the ashes. A sad ending. 